they've all wandered back. I said, I said, waiting for coffee, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I don't think they can hear you. Yet. No. No. Not over the slurping. Oh yeah, I'm waiting for the slurping. Yeah. Sorry, what? <laughs> Jeff said they can't hear me over the slurping. Well, that too. Just take a few deep breaths. Loosen up. of things currently I'm here to talk about uh, replication so uh, okay. yeah so this is the agenda so we'll uh, we're basically trying to compare uh, client-side replication with server-side replication um, um, show what are the challenges that we face with client-side replication today as it is in cluster um, show the server-side replication that's in plans and uh, the advantages that we uh, hope to get with it okay So today, let's say we have three nodes in the cluster, uh, in, 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 in a replica sub volume, and we have one client. So basically, I'm trying to show you what exactly happens in a client side replication. So we have something which is called log phase, where we take logs. Um, so I'm also going to try and count uh, network calls that we make for a typical write fork, OK, per se. So it's just three calls per log phase. We get the log, we get three acknowledgments back. So it's uh, client server three, server to client three. It's going to keep up. So then we have something called pre off phase. Uh, that's where uh, we have an exciter update on each of the breaks. Once uh, that is complete, we have the actual off phase where the client sends the data across all the three, um, across the wire over, the, uh, over to all the three nodes. Um, and that's where the data gets written on the uh, files. After that, we have post off phase where we go ahead and clear the oops, uh, X address that we set in the pre off phase. And uh, after that, we have the unlock phase. So, uh, for one write FOP in a scenario, we are seeing close to 30 network calls. And uh, I like to point out, like, this is not. I, I think, Pranit, correct me if I'm wrong, this is not, this doesn't always happen, right? I mean, there are certain optimizations, yeah. The, yeah. the, the uh, cars do go through, but it is not just there on the I.O. path. I.O. path, right, yeah. So, um, so I'll come back to why I explained this and how it works out uh, in, in the future slides. So, another thing that we, we, we always seem to face with client-side replication and uh, where the server side actually comes in is a scenario like this. So again, we have like three nodes, and we have one client, OK? So let's say this client is only seeing node one and two. It's not able to see the others, right? So the exciters are going to look something like this. So what it means is that uh, client one, uh, node one and node two are saying that this uh, current node three, you know, it's, it's faulty. The data is not there because you know it couldn't write it. And we are writing on the same file. Similarly, client two, which can only see node one and three, it's gonna blame you know node two, and the server is gonna look something like that. And then there's client three, who can only see these two, and you know it's gonna blame node one. And then everyone's blaming everyone. So it's like 
every node has two other nodes blaming itself. That doesn't happen actually. Mm, okay, which one? So, as soon as the third one is seized, just the two, two, it will actually, it will already be in sprint, so it can't do the writes. No, but it will happen, uh, I mean, but the uh, network sprint will happen, right? The, the, the replicas, they won't be in sprint. The data I'm talking about the... Yeah, data. O only yeah. two of them will be in split bin, but there will be a clear source. So this, this can't happen. If, if it happens, it is a, it's because of a bug. No, I okay. think he's talking about the network split Not talking about the data. <coughs> Sorry? I'm talking about the network split brain here. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So why wouldn't it happen? Because it will not mark the third one. Even though it's happening at the same time? Wait, this is three-way replication or two-way replication? Three, three. Three nodes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll discuss that offline then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is what uh, I think would happen and Pranita disagrees. <laughs> so, with servers, uh, okay, just one thing. So, um, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that the challenge that we're facing is that each individual client at any given point in time might see a different set of uh, you know replica uh, sub uh, rep uh, replica nodes, and uh, that is what would you know cause something like this. So the solution that you know server side replication provides is um, let me go through that and I'll explain how it helps. So what happens here is that there's always a leader involved in in a particular replica sub volume. So the client always talks to the leader no matter what. Leader receives the fob sort of sends it to the followers. The followers perform the fob. They send it back to the leader. Leader checks if you know enough quorum is made for itself to perform the fob or not. Then it goes ahead and you know performs the fob on itself. And if all is well and successful, it uh, sends acknowledgement back to the client. Just six network calls. And uh, the reason that that scenario won't happen.
everything that we have done now, uh, that could let those are <laughs> Okay. So, so what we have done in AFR for 3.9, uh, uh, which is yet to be like you know, GA is is uh, using of the compound props where we actually send out uh, pre-op and write in the same operation, the same network call, and then uh, post-op and unlock in the same uh, same network call. So uh, instead of five phases, it's now maybe it has become three now. But it's still not as good as um, uh, server-side uh, replication because of the locking and unlocking phase. So uh, that I don't think we can do anything about. So, so uh, the, the for, for synchronization purposes, uh, if we move it out to the server side, uh, we will just deliver uh, the same infra that we have in uh, JBR. Uh, but but what will we do with whether we will move to journals or stay with exciters is in the talks now. We haven't made any decisions yet, but but even if we move to server side, um, at least at the moment we are only going to have exciters to begin with. Uh, but but um, I, I don't know what will happen in the future. So it's 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 like based on what we decide on based on the tests and all that. But but if even uh, when we have to move to the server side, we kind of have to. Uh, solve the same problems that I was asking in the morning about uh, all these AHA translate, same problems, all problems have to be solved. That's actually uh, a, an important point that Pranith just made, that there's there's a strong similarity between some pieces of what, what, what we've done for JBR and what we have thought about doing for the other replication translators and what the Facebook folks were talking about this morning with their advanced HA translator in particular. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably need to look at, at, yep. at converging those. Um, another, another point to keep in mind is that a lot of the issues that um, we have with uh, client-side replication kind of become more severe with client-side EC because EC does an even even broader fan out. It's it, it, in traffic flow terms. It's kind of like you know replica eight, yeah. <laughs> and it's not that much data. But in terms of the number of 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 of, of, of uh, network operations that have to happen, it's kind of like that. So so that's also kind of a driver that that makes this more necessary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So just to add to what Jeff said, I think the uh, one more uh, extra motivation for uh, for server side EC is also the actually it's not a lot to do with uh, server side uh, of the synchronization, but uh, more to do with like the other side that you had about journals versus uh, external attributes. Yeah. So so the thing uh, that we know in EC is uh, the problem with random AO and recoverability. So if you have like four plus two uh, uh, EC model and let's say three bricks went ahead with the right and three bricks did not go ahead with the right, there is no way to recover. Right. Yeah. So whereas if you are doing just appending right, appending right, so you can just clip off some of the uh, the last five bytes in some of the things and then say okay we have recovered this much data, but with random AO if something somewhere in the middle if if we lose some data then that's it we are kind of screwed. So that is one of the reasons uh, why we are looking for uh, uh, journals uh, yeah. for EC. There's the EC hardware issue too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So so one more thing is that, <laughs> that uh, I think there there are some cards which uh, do EC on the on the hardware. Uh, so there are separate cards which do carrier uh, coding. It, it would also make it uh, simpler to do this if we move to the other side. Uh, yeah. I just realized something, Praneet. Uh, did, did, did you have a talk in this summit? No, not really. But I, I'm pretty sure you spoke more than everyone else. <laughs> 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 yeah, thanks. Who else? That's called. Okay, one more. <coughs> This is not a question. <clears throat> I'm happy this is happening because it kind of helps the HD2 in a bit, uh, you know, move along a little bit. But I don't worry about whether AFR will work on the server side, EC will work on the server side, hmm. what will happen, and where. Yeah. 
use non polite terms and pretty break loose or what? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at this point, we actually are going to do that official coffee break, um, and then I think we'll start moving in towards birds of a feather session. So, kind of.